Let's take a look at how the measurement window works. We can directly drive several of the common spectrophotometers on the market today. Let's try the Konica Minolta FD9. One of the great new features of this powerful measurement tool is that it can use reference files from different manufacturers, even sources different from the tool you're using. For example, I don't have to use a reference file made specifically for the FD9 by some Konica Minolta software. I can use a Barbieri zip file, an i1 profile or text file, or a .txf file, common tab delimited text file, or any of the other file types you recognize here. Let's resize this window so you can see it. If your instrument has the ability to automatically position a target, like an ISIS or an FD9, you can choose Auto Position. Here all you need to do is feed in the sheet, and the software will automatically identify where the patches are and start measuring. Couldn't be simpler. With the ISIS, the chart dimensions are already known because of the reference file, or what we call the target definition file. So you just feed it in and it goes. The FD9 will do a pre-scan of the entire page you're feeding in and will look for a collection of patches that matches the target definition file. If you have a complicated press sheet with a lot of colors on it, it may have trouble automatically detecting the colors on your target. Yeah, it looks pretty confused. So it will give you an option to just select the target manually. You just click and drag around your target patches. Click the Confirm button, and once you've verified that the sample points are set in the correct locations for your target, you click Measure. Let's take another measurement. Your software may look a little different depending on which Chromex product you are working with. This time we'll see what happens with manual positioning. You just need to feed the test chart into the instrument, and with the FD9 you get a preview of the press sheet. With manual positioning, you manually click and drag around the perimeter to define where the target patches are. You can choose which corner to start dragging from. It'll work for me. any corner. Depending on your target, these patches might be pretty small, so feel free to enlarge the preview window by dragging at the corners. If you make a mistake or you want to do it over again, just click and drag again. The interface automatically updates. I didn't get the bottom rows exactly right. There we go. Click Confirm Measure. After this, we'll take another measurement and we will look at memory scan positioning. This is available for any full page measurement instrument such as the x right ISIS, the I.O. table, or the Konica Minolta FD9. The first time you start memory scan positioning, you'll press the Set Memory button in order to place the memory coordinates into the system. Every time after that, you would be updating the memory with new coordinates. Click the Update Memory button first, and then insert the chart. This gives you a preview window as before, and you define the limits of your patches as before, but this time you are teaching the software where it'll go each time to measure the patches. The idea is that if you have a set layout of your test chart and you can always set the chart up at the same place every time, then the software can skip the hunting for the patches and just measure that same location each time. Set memory. Back to the main screen. The memory has now been updated to know where to find the patches on this sheet, and the user needs to feed the sheet in the same way each time. Now it skips directly to finding patches and starts measuring. Let's try one more, and I'd like to show you a neat trick. The software allows you to rotate the target to whichever layout you want. Some reference files are intended to be used vertically when you're wanting to measure horizontally. Well, you can rotate it any way you want, even upside down. 
Do you want to know if your I.O. table measures differently depending on how the target is placed? You can test that now. Maybe the page is missing a leading edge or a trailing edge that it needs in order to be able to measure properly. You can just rotate it around in the preview and insert it upside down into the instrument. This won't work on an ISIS, obviously, but it works great on an I.O. table or an FD9. The final measurement exported from the measurement tool will still have the normal ordering of patches, just like it's supposed to have. That's all for now, and thanks for watching.